Good morning, alien enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Alien Bulletin. Again, I was planning to take a day off. It's a lovely, glorious day in London. The sun is shining in on me at the moment. Love to go out and take a walk and all that good stuff. And then all of a sudden, Avi Loeb comes out with another bulletin, another article in Medium revealing yet another paper. And this one is is perhaps the most unexpected of all. 3i Atlas is making a very, well, not a very close approach to the sun. Actually, it's just the closest to the sun that it's going to get, but still further away from the sun than Earth is, just inside the orbit of Mars, actually. So really, when it comes down to it, 3i Atlas is not making that close of an approach to the sun. If you compare it, say, to Oumuamua, which passed much closer to the sun than the orbit of Mercury, but all of that led to results that were quite unexpected as well with that object. If you're interested in all of that, I've got videos linked at the end of this one. But instead, what we have is 3i Atlas again behaving strangely, becoming extremely active and extremely bright. And again, even though it was expected that 3i Atlas would become more active as it got closer to the sun, it's going off the charts and nobody can explain why. And then after I've given you the latest news on all of that, it also needs to be discussed as to what's going on with China. Everybody is talking about the NASA images that were allegedly captured when every orbiter that NASA had at its disposal turned around and photographed 3i Atlas as it made a close approach with Mars. And of course, these photos have not been released ostensibly because of the government shutdown, but nobody seems to be talking about the fact that China also is not revealing any information about 3i Atlas, even though they too have an orbiter around Mars that also took pictures of 3i Atlas. Not only that, China had a number of observatories, a number of other instruments that were heavily involved in tracking 3i Atlas and providing all of that information to the public. But immediately after NASA shut down all of its communication with the world, China did as well. And it's not like they're going through a government shutdown. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and address the big elephant in the room. What's happening with 3i Atlas? What about these new photos? What about this new study that Avi Loeb is talking about? First of all, do we have the photos from NASA yet, the ones that were captured when 3i Atlas made its close approach to Mars? No. We don't. However, we do have quite a number of photographs that were taken of 3i Atlas by numerous instruments that are capable of photographing an object when the sun is in the way, capable of essentially filtering out the sun's light and photographing everything else. Let me tell you, an in-depth study was undertaken of all of the results of these photos. And as I mentioned before, it is shocking how 3i Atlas is behaving compared to what everybody thought was going to happen. Okay, in the course of this video, I'm going to be quoting extensively from a new article from Avi Loeb in the Medium website where he posts most of his articles. Let's get into it. Quote, new images of the interstellar object 3i Atlas. Yes, I didn't lie. These are new images as it approached perihelion on October 29th, 2025 reveal rapid brightening and a color bluer than the sun. 3i Atlas is currently hidden from terrestrial telescopes behind the sun as it went through solar conjunction relative to Earth on October 21st, 2025. However, this unfavorable geometry of opposition from Earth, a possible hint of design, placed 3i Atlas within the fields of view of several space-based solar coronagraphs and heliosphere imagers, enabling its continued observation during its final approach toward 
towards perihelion. Really cool that we have these types of instruments at our disposal, by the way. So here's what the results were in the instruments that managed to grab them. First of all, the STEREO, Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, which consists of two identical spacecraft that were launched in 2006, nearly 20 years ago. STEREO A, which orbits slightly more quickly than Earth around the Sun, and STEREO B, which orbits slightly more slowly than Earth around the Sun. STEREO B has not been operational since 2014, so only STEREO A managed to observe 3i Atlas. The observations were made by two cameras. Then the second instrument was the SOHO, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, launched way back in 1995. This orbits the Sun-Earth first Lagrange point. Now, a Lagrange point is sort of a solar system parking lot where the gravity of Earth and the Sun balance one another out, making it a very good location to place a space station, telescope, something along those lines, because it won't drift very far. It will essentially stay put, not being subject to the gravitational influence of either the Sun or the Earth. And then you had the GOES-19, which was launched just last year, a weather satellite operating in geostationary orbit, carrying the compact coronagraph instrument. So this new paper, which by the way, I have linked in the description, reports observations of 3i Atlas from all of these instruments during the months of September and October of this year. The data shows a rapid rise in the brightness of 3i Atlas, scaling inversely with distance from the sun to the power of 7.5, a huge rise in brightness in a very short amount of time. The CCOR instrument resolves a glow extending out to 300,000 kilometers around 3i Atlas, which is comparable to the scale of the plume of carbon dioxide, which was captured by the Sphere X Space Observatory way back on August 8th. In addition to that, 3i Atlas appears distinctly bluer than the Sun in the Lasco photometry, in contrast to earlier observations which showed it to be red, and by the way, there was also a period of time when it was green, suggesting that the emission contributes a substantial fraction of the overall visible brightness. In other words, this thing continues to change colors as rapidly as I change personalities. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Okay, let's continue. Following its October 2025 perihelion, 3i Atlas will return to be observable from Earth at twilight as it arrives at closest approach to Earth on December 19, 2025. Ground-based observations as well as data from the Hubble and Webb Space Telescopes during the month of December will be able to characterize 3i Atlas in great detail. The new data suggests that 3i Atlas will likely emerge from perihelion brighter than before. If some of you are confused about all of this, let me try to clear this up. The thing that was weird about when this object, when 3i Atlas went behind the sun, was not that it was behind the sun when it made its closest approach to Earth, but it was behind the sun when it made its closest approach to the sun, when we would get the best look at it, when it would be the most active, and when we would get the best idea as to its chemical composition. By the time we are making our closest approach to 3i Atlas, it will be a considerable distance away from the sun and therefore considerably less active, giving up a lot less of its secrets. The authors of the new paper state, quote, the reason for 3i Atlas's rapid brightening, which far exceeds the brightening rate of Oort cloud comets, in other words, solar system comets at similar distances from the sun, remains unclear. Okay, so that's the latest from 3i Atlas as far as our observatories on Earth are concerned. But what about China? What about the Mars orbiter that China had at their disposal that photographed 3i Atlas weeks ago? What about the other observatories that were until recently providing information to the public about 3i Atlas so that it was easier to track it? 
What's going on there? Well, interestingly enough, almost nobody here in the West is talking about that topic, but the Indian news agency WION, W-I-O-N, well, they were very interested in this topic and released a pretty detailed story on it. Okay, so according to the Wean story, in late August, when 3I Atlas was still inbound towards Mars, China's Purple Mountain Observatory, or PMO, and the CNSA Deep Space Network were among the earliest to release trajectory models in local academic channels. They confirmed the object's interstellar origin using optical and radar signatures cross-verified with Japan's Subaru telescope and in India's Ares Observatory. In addition to that, around the object's closest Mars approach expected in early September, the last Chinese public data set came from the Xixiang 35-meter radio dish, showing a signal strength drop just before the object moved behind the sun relative to Earth. After that, no further observations were logged on China's National Astronomical Data Center, or NADC, portal, marking a sudden data gap that puzzled global trackers. So what's the official reason? Well, when journalists reached out to Chinese space officials, the CNSA spokesperson cited instrument scheduling conflicts with the Chang'e 7 lunar mission preparations and the Kui Chao 2 relay calibration, probably mispronouncing all of that, as reasons for temporary suspension of interstellar object monitoring. This explanation aligns with published telescope logs which show redirected observations time towards lunar and Earth orbit projects. But still, very strange that China would choose to do that at that particular moment. Now, Avi Loeb on the Joe Rogan experience had this to say, quote, every lost observation narrows our window to understand what 3i Atlas really is. Once it passes behind the sun, we might never see it again. Loeb added that China's early tracking was crucial, but the global scientific community needs to maintain transparency even amid political or mission priorities. Now, several Chinese researchers speaking anonymously in domestic forums have suggested that data from deep space objects is now classified when signals overlap with defense frequencies or are deemed strategically sensitive. The Xi'an Satellite Control Center, which handles both civilian and military tracking, may have rerouted 3i Atlas data internally, a pattern observed previously during asteroid 2020. 22 WJ1's atmospheric entry. Of course, the strange thing about that is that particular asteroid got handed off to the military because it represented a potential threat to Earth, whereas 3i Atlas is tens of millions of kilometers away. Doesn't seem to be the greatest explanation. So following China's silence, European and Indian observatories, particularly Gaia, ESO, and the Bengaluru telescope stepped in to maintain optical coverage. Despite differences in data release policies, coordination through the Minor Planet Center allow continuity of trajectory modeling. But here's the larger implication. 3i Atlas has inadvertently revealed how space observation now sits at the intersection of science, strategy, and sovereignty. As nations compete for first contact and discovery credit, transparency often takes a back seat. Let me repeat that. As nations compete for first contact and discovery credit, transparency often takes a back seat. Has China discovered something about 3i Atlas that they don't want to share with the rest of the world? Again, keep in mind, the Tianwen orbiter took photographs of this thing weeks and weeks ago. There is no government shutdown in China, nor any other reason as to why these photographs would have been hidden from the public, aside from the fact that China doesn't want to reveal them for reason or reasons unknown. But again, keep in mind, we're talking about an object that has done so many things that are outside the purview of what we would expect to see from a comet, especially recently with this sudden brightening. 
incredible brightening, far beyond what we would expect for a comet. Again, Avilobe suggested months ago that 3i Atlas might be generating its own light. And if that's the case, and we've noticed that now as it passes behind the sun, does that suggest artificial origin? Well, almost certainly yes, because an object this size, if it were natural, should not be generating its own light. So the mystery continues, folks. NASA isn't saying anything. The Chinese aren't saying anything. In the meantime, 3i Atlas is behaving in a way that nobody really expected, becoming much more active than it should, or at least brighter than it should. Might this mean the 3i Atlas is actually producing its own light, as Avi Loeb suggested a couple of months ago? If that is the case, 3i Atlas is almost definitely an artificial object. And by the way, I had Grok undertake a Bayesian study, or let me be more specific or accurate about this. Grok offered to undertake a Bayesian study of 3i Atlas based on the anomalies that we know about right now to determine the percentage chance, the probability that 3i Atlas is an artificial object and not a natural one. And in my next video, coming out soon, I'm going to give you the results of that study. So please stay tuned. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also consider supporting this channel on Patreon and keep your eyes on the merch store. Honestly, I'm still not sure if it's open. As far as I know, it isn't. But when it does reopen, it's going to have the 3i Atlas merchandise available again. So make sure to check the store. I'll provide a link for you in the description. Thanks again. And until next time, stay angry about space.